Welcome back to Hashtag Fish, a channel where we teach the science behind shrimp and fish farming. In this video, we will talk about how to maintain the stability of the water under a super intensive bioflock system. In the previous episode, we went through what bioflocks are, how to get them started, and even share a couple of recipes with you guys. We ended the video on a very important note, where we talk about the most important water quality parameters and the ideal levels we need to maintain them to have a healthy system. In this video, we will teach you how to do that. Hi, I'm Gianna and I'm passionate about aquaculture and aquatic animal health. Remember, in a bioflock system, there will be a natural tendency for your pH, alkalinity and oxygen to drop and your ammonia, nitrite and nitrate to go up. This is because for our shrimp or tilapia to grow under these intensive conditions, they will be eating a lot of formulated feed. Don't think that because there are plenty of bioflocks, they don't need to be fed with commercial diets multiple times a day, because they do. Yes, shrimp and tilapia do eat bioflocks, but bioflocks are just a nutritional supplement and bioflocks do not contain all necessary amino acids, fat acids, and the energy needed by these animals to grow. If you fail to provide the sufficient amount of formulated feed to the shrimp, they will get weak and eventually cannibalize each other, and your FCR will explode. With tilapia, it is the same story. Failing to provide enough feed will make them weak and they will eventually start to die. On the other hand, if you provide the right amount of feed, they will grow very well and because of the supplementation with bioflocks, the FCR will be acceptable for very high stock densities. Just a recap from the previous episode. These are the water quality parameters we need to maintain to avoid a collapse in the system. Keep your oxygen above 5 mg per liter. Keep alkalinity above 150 mg per liter. Keep pH above 7.3, ideally between 7.5 and 8 is better. Keep total ammonia and nitride below 1 mg per liter. Keep total amount of flocos as measured in your cone between 5 to 15 milliliters per liter per shrimp or 10 to 30 milliliters per liter per tilapia. To keep oxygen above 5 all the time, you must have a good aeration system that you provide excellent to the shrimp and fish to breathe, but also to the bioflux themselves to mineralize all the organic matter and to keep the flocks up in the water column without letting them settle. For larger ponds, the use of paddle wheels at 30 HP per hectare is normally used. They are distributed in such a way to concentrate the excess sludge in the middle of the pond, which ideally will be fitted with a deeper area on the central call toilet. This is drained from time to time to keep the bioflux under 15 milliliters per liter. For more modern systems, using much smaller circular tanks above ground or rectangular tanks or raceways in greenhouse, the use of blowers at 50 to 100 HP per hectare using air stones or even better, air tubes, are preferable because they are cheaper, easier to maintain, less longer and don't block like air stones. When comparing the use of blowers against other types of aerators such as air injectors using, using propellers or fountain types using vertical pumps, blowers with air tubes are a clear winner. They allow much better development of bioflocks in the system, which in turn improve water quality by keeping ammonia levels lower than other aeration systems. Now, in terms of ammonia, which will be generated by the consumption of formulated feeds by animals, we correct it by adding carbon preferable molasses. You may ask, can I use rice bran instead of molasses? Yes, you can, but there are some drawbacks. Molasses is about 50% carbon, in the form of simple sugar that is readily available for the bacteria. The carbon in rice bran is starchier and has other stuff like fiber that will generate more sludge in the system. Also, because rice bran does not dissolve as well in the water, it will take much longer for the bacteria to use it, so it does not correct ammonia spike as quickly as the molasses or sugar do. You can see what I'm talking about clear here in this experiment, using different ratios of molasses to rice bran. 
where ammonia levels are lower with more molasses in the mix and much lower with molasses only. Okay, but how much molasses do we use during shrimp culture? During the culture, we can follow a 6 to 1 ratio. In other words, we add 6 grams of carbon for every gram of nitrogen. So let's give a practical example here. Say for instance that your ammonia reach 1 mg per liter. This means we have 1 gram of ammonia per 1000 liter of water. We then need to add 6, 6 grams of carbon per 1000 liter of water. If you are using molasses, which is made of 50% of carbon, you then need to add 12 grams. To simplify at all, we need to add 12 grams of molasses to reduce 1 mg of liter of ammonia in 1000 liters of water. But of course, there are two major consequences of this process. Number one, the pH and alkalinity will drop because flux will use up all the oxygen and give out CO2. Number two, we will have a lot more flux being formed in the system. To increase the pH and alkalinity, we have to add liming materials. One very smart way of doing that is to be proactive instead of waiting for the drop and then correcting later. This particular research found that you can add calcium hydroxide, also known as hydrate lime, according to how much formulated feed is being added to the system. They found that by adding between 10 to 20% of calcium hydroxide per kilogram of feed given in a day, they could keep the pH and alkalinity stable during the culture. So you don't need to overcorrect it. For instance, for every one kilogram of feed given, you also add 100 grams of calcium hydroxide to your system. Of course, calcium hydroxide is a powder. You need to mix it with water in a bucket first and then evenly splash it all over your tank or pond. Now for the extra bioflux you get, we also have to keep in mind that we cannot let them overload the system. There is an ideal limit for how much bioflux we can have. Remember that table that we spoke earlier? So how do you deal with the excess flux if you don't want to exchange water? Again, there's a smart and simple way to deal with that, which is by having one or more clarifier tanks next to your pond or culture tanks, where the excess bioflux will settle. The concept is very simple and easy to build with some basic plumbing skills. You will need to make the water flow in and out of the clarifier tank by using a small pump or an airlift, and you need to adjust the water flow in and out with the use of a tap. Okay, now you know how to maintain a perfectly balanced water quality conditions using Bioflock technology. All you need to do is to build a small system for yourself and try it out. Remember to measure all those parameters on a daily basis and keep on top of things. Do not underfeed, but also do not overfeed. And always check your shrimp or fish on a daily basis and once a week do a weight check to see if they are growing as expected and if, it, if they are looking healthy. You are now an expert in Bioflock technology. Please let us know in the comments how your system is doing and if you found value in this content and, and if you would like us to make more videos like this. Please give us a like and subscribe to hashtag fish. Thank you for watching and see you next time.